Welcome back. Today I will read chapter 20. I hope you enjoy it. Chapter 20. The Hour of Triumph. Special announcement, said the loudspeaker in a pompous voice. The management of the fair takes great pleasure of presenting Mr. Homer L. Zinkerman in his famous pick. The truck bearing this extraordinary animal is now approaching the infield. Kindly stand back and give the truck room to proceed. In a few moments, the pig will be unloaded in a special judging ring in front of the grandstand, where a special reward will be made. Will the crowd please make a way and let the truck pass? Thank you. Wilbur trembled when he heard this speech. He felt happy, but dizzy. The truck crept along slowly in low speed. Crowds of people surrounding it, and Mr. Abel had to drive very carefully in order not to run over anybody. At last, he managed to reach the judge's stand Avery jumped out and lowered the tailgate. I'm scared to death, whispered Mrs. Zickerman. Hundreds of people are looking at us. Cheer up, replied Miss April. This is fun. Up, unload your pig, please, said the loud speaker. All together now, boys, said Mrs. Zickerman. Seven men stepped toward from the crowd to help lift the crate. Avery was the busiest helper of all. Tuck your shirt in, Avery, cried Mrs. Zinkerman, and tighten your belt. Your pants are coming down. Can't you see I'm busy, replied Avery in disgust. Look, cried Fern, pointing, there's Henry. Don't shout, Fern, said her mother, and don't point. Can't I please have some money? asked Fern. Henry invited me to go on a Ferris wheel again. O only I don't think he has any money left. He ran out of money. Miss April opened her handbag. Here, she said. Here's 40 cents. Now, get lost. And be back at our regular meeting place by the pig pen very soon. Fern raced off, ducking and dodging through the crowd in search of Henry. The Zickerman pig is now being taken from his crate, boomed the voice in the loudspeaker. Stand by far for an announcement. Tipperton crouched under the straw at the bottom of the crate. What a lot of nonsense, muttered the rat. A lot of fuss about nothing. Over in the pig pen, silent in, in alone, Charlotte rested her two front legs and braced the egg sack. Charlotte could hear everything that was said on the loudspeaker. The words gave her courage. This was her hour of triumph. As Ripper came out of the crate and the crowd clapped and cheered, Mr. Sigmund took off his cap and bowed. Lovey pulled his big handkerchief from his pocket and wiped the sweat from his back of his, of his neck. Every knelt in the dirt by Ripper's side, basically stroking him and showing off. Mr. Sigmund and Mrs. Abel stood on the running board of the truck. Ladies and gentlemen, said the last speaker, we now present Mr. Homer L. Zygmunt's established pig. The fame of this unique animal has spread to the far corners of the earth, distracting my invulnerable tourist to our great state. Many of you will recall that never to be forgotten the day last summer when the writing appeared mysteriously on the spider's web and Mr. Sickerman's barn, calling the attention of all 
and sun-dried to the fact that this pig was completely out of ordinary. This miracle has never been fully explained, although learned men visited the Sigmund's pig pen and so sturdy and observed the phenomenon. In the last analysis, we we'll simply know that we are dealing with a supernatural forces here, and should all feel proud and grateful. In the words of the spotless web, ladies and gentlemen, this is some pig. Wilbur blushed. He stood perfectly still and tried to look his best. This magnificent animal, continued the loudspeaker, is truly terrific. Look at him, ladies and gentlemen. Note the smoothness and whiteness of the, of the coat. Observe a spotless skin and healthy pink glow of ears and scalp. Snap. It's the buttermilk, replied Miss Abel to Mrs. Zigerman. Note the general radiance of this animal. Then remember the day when the word radiant appeared clearly on the web? When it's come to this mysterious writing? Not from the spider. We can rest assured of that. Spiders are very clever at weaving their webs. But needless to say, spiders cannot write. Oh they, oh, they can't, can't they? replied Charlotte to herself. Ladies and gentlemen, continued the last speaker, I may not take any more of this vulnerable time. On behalf of the governors of the fair, I have the honor of rewarding a special prize to $25 to Mrs. Sigmund together with a handsome bronze medal suitably engraved in token of our appreciation of the of the part played by this pig is brilliant this terrific this humble pig in attracting so many, so many visitors to our great county fair where both have been feeling diz dizzier and dizzier although this long this commentary speech when he heard the crowd begin to cheer and clap again, he suddenly fainted away. His legs clasped, and his mind went blank, and he fell on the ground, unconscious. What's wrong? asked the loudspeaker. What's going on, Zickerman? What's the trouble with you, pig? Avery was kneeling by Wilbur's head, stroking him. Mr. Sickman was dancing about, fanning him with his cap. He's all right, cried Mr. Sigmund. He gets these spells. He's modest and can't stand praise. Well, we can't give him a prize to a dead pig, said the loudspeaker. speaker. It's never been done. He isn't dead, hollered Sigmund. He's fainted. He gets him, he gets embarrassed easily. Run for, run for some water, lovey. Larry sprang from the judge's ring and disappeared. Tim Tim poked his head from the straw. He noticed that the end of Wilbur's tail was within reach. Tim Tim grinned. I tend to do this, he chuckled. He took Wilbur's tail in his mouth and bit it just as hard as he could bite. The pain relieved Wilbur. In a flash, he was back on his feet. Ouch! He screamed. Hooray! yelled the crowd. He's up! The pig's up! Good work, Zygmunt. That's some pig. Everyone was delighted. Mr. Zygmunt was the most pleased of all. He sighed with relief. Nobody had seen Timberton. The rat had done his work well. And now one of the Dutchess climbed into the ring. But the with the prizes. He handed Mrs. Sigman two ten dollar bills and a five dollar bill. And he tried he tied the metal around Wilbur's neck. He took he shook hands with Mrs. Sigman while Wilbur blushed. Every put out his hand and the judge took hands with him too. 
The crowd cheered. The photographer took Robert's picture. A great feeling of happiness swept over the sick men's and the Abel's. This was the greatest moment in Mr. Sigmund's life. It is deeply satisfying to win a prize in front of a lot of people. As River was being shot back into the crate, Larry came charging into the crowd carrying a pail of water. His, his eyes laid a, had a wider look. Without hesitating a second, he dashed, to the, he dashed the water at River, and in excitement, he missed his aim. And the water splashed all over Mr. Sigmund and Avery. They, they got soaking wet. For goodness sake, but our Mr. Sigmund, who is really drenched. Oh, here's you, lovey. I, you can't see the pig is all right. You asked for water, said lovely meekly. I didn't ask for a shower bath, said Mr. Sigmund. The crowd roared with laughter. Finally, Mr. Sigmund had to laugh too. And of course, Avery was tickled to find himself so wet. And he immediately did, started and act like a clown. He pretended he was taking a shower bath and he made faces and danced around and rubbed imaginary soap under his armpits. Then he dried himself with imaginary towel. Avery, stop it, cried his mother. Stop showing off. But the crowd loved it. Avery heard nothing about their applause. He liked being a clown in the ring with everybody watching in front of the grandstand. When he discovered there was still a little water left in the bottom of the pail, he raised the pail high in the air and dumped the wall on himself and made faces. The children in the grandstand screamed with appreciation. As, he, as at last things calmed down, when Bruce was loaded into the truck, Avery left from the room by his mother and placed on the seat of the truck to dry off. The truck driven, driven by Mr. April crossed all the way back into the pig pen. Avery's wet trousers made a big red spot on the seat. See you next week for chapter 21.